Out of all the models of Terminator that have been in the movies, which is your favourite? T-1000 baby, Robert Patrick, all day. <laughs> have you ever been watching the Terminator movies and found yourself thinking, why did Skynet, a supposedly super intelligent mega computer, pick the voice and body of an Austrian bodybuilder for a robot designed for infiltration? That question has been answered in exactly one Terminator movie, in a deleted scene that's exactly as stupid as you're expecting. So I'm assuming that most people will have actually seen this scene. Yeah, if you're a fan of Terminator, you've seen the scene we're talking about because it's like infamously terrible. But don't worry if you've not, there'll be plenty of clips of it throughout this video. And for people who haven't, do you want to quickly run through and I'll put clips in as you talk? Oh, well, basically it's uh, established in this, like, you know, sadly deleted scene that when cyber research systems in Terminator 3 were deciding what face they wanted for the eventual bipedal robots they were going to build, they decided upon the face of a guy called Sergeant William Candy. Hi, I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. Before we continue, I would like to point out that at that point in the film, the most advanced Terminator we see is this one, the T-1. And they were already thinking about what they wanted to put on the face of the T-800. That is 799 moves in advance they are planning for this fucking thing, right? There are chess playing robots who don't like plan that many moves in advance and they're only planning on annihilating one person. What are cyber research systems doing? They invested like millions of dollars of R&D into putting a face on a robot they don't know how to make yet. I also love the fact they're on the T-1. Yes. They've built one. <laughs> they built one Terminator that is on fucking wheels. It looks like a kid's toy that you would get out of like a fucking McDonald's Happy Meal. This robot is just like a gun on wheels, and that's apparently the pinnacle of military advancement in Terminator 3. I think they and also have a T9, don't they? The, the, yeah, thing. they have like, the, you know, I think the, it's a T9. The, the hunter killer or the finder herter, <laughs> as I like to call it. <laughs> They've got a drone with a gun and a gun on wheels. Wow, amazing. The pinnacle of military advancement right there. But just think about how balls out confident cyber research systems must seem to investors when they're bringing that thing out on stage. When they wheel out that motherfucker, this clunky ass piece of shit that has to go down a hallway that's like 40 foot wide, otherwise it can't pose a threat. And they're going out on stage going, but our eventual plan is to build bipedal walking robots that look exactly like humans. That's not running before you can crawl. That's planning an alibi for a hit and run three years before you get your driver's license. Why are you planning that far ahead? And why are you investing millions of dollars in doing it when you can barely build robots that can get down hallways? Like, Sir Kill a Lot is more advanced than the T1. I'd be more terrified of that bastard on the battlefield. They, they mentioned Cyberdyne. Yes. So there's a chance that they have the data from Cyberdyne analysing the chip. That is a point because it is mentioned in Terminator 2 that Cyberdyne found the remnants of the Terminator from Terminator 1 and basically like worked backwards from that. But remember, all they found was a single arm and a half busted chip from its head. So I want to know how from an, a robot's arm and a microchip, they somehow managed to get the exact look of the skull right. Great leaders aren't born, they're made. Right here with the technology developed at CRS. Even if we give them the most favourable opportunity to have built this possible, if they got the chip from T2, the data from the chip from T2, and it had a plan for the exact T800 in it. Yeah, I'd like, oh, here is like the basic information about the T800 model number. Yeah, at what point do they go, you know what, instead of like building this thing first, yeah, showing these people, let's build this piece of shit on wheels. That's the thing, isn't it? Like, if they had the plans for the T800, why start with the T1? Why start with Sir Killalot? And the thing is, we wouldn't need to have this conversation if this scene didn't exist, because if you remove that scene from the movie and it was never filmed and we weren't aware of its presence, if we watch Terminator 3 as a standalone product, what we can infer from that is that the human military, the furthest they ever got with like, you know, the Terminator program, is this Johnny Five looking motherfucker right here. And then Skynet came in and improved upon the design to such an extent they made bipedal walking killbots. And I like that explanation more because that shows why Skynet fucking won. Skynet took this shitty, inefficient human design and improved upon it to the point where it becomes like the most effective and terrifying weapon known in that universe. But instead now, we have to assume that 
from this scene, Skynet just found plans and then just built the shit it found? That makes Skynet seem super incompetent. So we've covered how stupid it is they're already attempting to build, whether they had the plans or not, a T-800. Yeah, a bipedal walking killbot, when the closest they've got so far is a Johnny Five looking piece of made in China shit. But let's just like look in a bit more detail at the man behind the face. Yes, Master Sergeant William fucking Candy. Ooh, it's me. So what we're supposed to infer from that scene as an audience is that Cyber Research Systems took the face of this man, this glorious hunk of a man, and decided to use that as the face of their purely theoretical robot. You may notice, gentle viewer, that this makes absolutely no fucking sense because why would you invest millions of dollars building an indestructible kill bot if you're just going to make it look like a human? The only reason you would want it to look human is if you were using it for infiltration. Yes, like it's used by Skynet. Yeah, but then if they all look the same, what's the fucking... You don't want them off a product line because then you'll know what they look like. Oh, look, there's Schwarzenegger. He's, yeah. he's a Terminator. Yeah, that's the Terminator right there. Like, once the enemy combatants realise that's what Terminators look like, you like, they are completely useless for infiltration purposes, which is why, like, you know, previous movies have established not all Terminators look like Schwarzenegger. That's just what that one particular model looks like. But they're not even planning on using it for infiltration because Sergeant Candy himself says to camera during the fucking, like, the pitch for the T-800 that it's to save, like, you know, American lives. So the idea that it's going to be on the front line. At which point, why even bother giving it a face? If you're going to put it on the front line, it doesn't matter what it looks like. And if anything, I'd argue, it'd be scarier if it's a robot skeleton. And we've not even got to the voice yet because you may have noticed from these clips that Arnold Schwarzenegger has a very thick southern accent in that scene, which was... Fun fact, apparently provided by Samuel L. Jackson. I was honored to be selected by CRS in the ongoing effort to save American lives. Isn't there a random extra in that scene whose voice Schwarzenegger dubbed over? Yes, and they turn to the colonel who says, I don't like the voice of this robot we're going to exclusively use to kill people. And this extra turn because we can fix it in Schwarzenegger's voice. We can fix it. And what we as the audience are supposed to infer from that is that after they scanned in William Candy's face and body, they told him and sat down like, like like the body, fantastic, the face, very, very scary. But the, that voice, it's, it's just not scary enough. It's like, I can imagine William Candy getting really annoyed. Like, isn't this going to go on a robot? Isn't the robot scary enough? So no, no, we need a scarier voice. Well, who's got a scarier voice than me? And they point to like just some guy in a suit with glasses on and a notepad. And it's like... He's got a scarier voice than I do. It's like, you've not heard him talk. He goes, okay then. I, I'm a bit disappointed, but I still get paid though, right? Because I'm assuming they must have paid William Candy. Like, you can say, oh, he did it for his country. And he's, like, he's proud to like, you know, volunteer for this project. But at the same time, like, I would want some compensation if they were going to put my face onto a robot that was going to be exclusively used to kill people on the front line of wars because my face is now going to be plastered on the front of every fucking newspaper and magazine for the rest of human history. The Terminator goes back in time in that universe and kills people, which means that there is a guy walking around with the Terminator's face. Like, William Candy exists in that universe now, whether we like it or not. And like during Terminator 2, when you've got like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger doing twirling shotgun motorcycle combos on like, you know, the cab of a truck driven by like Robert Patrick Policeman, like Sergeant Candy might have been at home and he might have watched that on TV. Like he might have thought, isn't that me? Like, I imagine he got questioned quite a lot after like the events of Terminator 1 and like someone who looked exactly like him walked into a police station and shot 30 people. <laughs> What annoys me most about this scene though is that it completely demolishes a lot of really cool theories people had about why the Terminator looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because one of the theories is like the robo skeleton is so heavy, you need to put like a really heavy set, like you know, build of a human over it to hide all the inner workings of the machine. And it's also like, in, like hinted at that they do it through intimidation. Like when you're fighting like malnourished future soldiers, it's just like it's when you see this like just perfect Adonis like man walk in holding two miniguns you think well fuck me I'm, we've lost and one of the theories about why the Terminator talks like Arnold Schwarzenegger like in a really stilted obviously unnatural robotic way 
is that Skynet didn't have like access to vast data banks of human speech because obviously it obliterated virtually all of the like infrastructure the Earth had. So what it had to do is cobble together its best approximation of what an act of a human voice sounded like. And that's why the Terminator sounds like a person who doesn't speak English as their first language. Because it doesn't. It's a robot trying to approximate human English. But no, it turns out that Skynet just discovered, like, oh, uh, terminatorvoice.exe, and just put that in. It makes Skynet look super incompetent because it basically means that it just took all of the human ideas, like the supposedly inferior race it wants to, like, you know, wipe off the face of the planet, and uses them because it can't think of anything better. I can understand why this scene did not make it into the film. Because when you break it down, it completely obliterates the established law of the Terminator universe, which Terminator Genesis went ahead and did anyway. But yes, as you might expect, this scene is not in the theatrical version of Terminator 3 and is therefore not considered canon. However, I would like to counter that by saying any scene which involves Arnold Schwarzenegger wearing this hat should absolutely be canon. Do you know what I love most about this scene? What? It's two minutes long, and it was obviously intended as like, you know, an Easter egg for fans. Like, oh look, this is where the Terminator's face came from. Haven't you always wondered what that is? And also as a joke. Um, but it completely just destroys the universe that it exists in, to the point where this single two minute scene, we've been recording for 50 minutes. But there's going to be so much cut footage of me and you just going back and forth about how this ruins Terminator. <laughs> yeah, because we came into this, like, the article itself, if anyone goes back to read it, has got a couple of jokes about how they made a T-800 model when they only have a T-1, right? Yes. But then, obviously, when Carl was reading that, my brain went, well, no, but they mentioned Cyberdyne, so they might have had their research. But then you find yourself going, if they have their research, how do they get details on how the head's built? Yes. Or is it like the paradox loop? where they built it so it exists in the future and yeah. it goes back in time to build itself. Right? Then you find yourself asking, if they had Cyberdyne's research, why start with the T1, which is objectively more inefficient and less cool looking than the bipedal walking robot? So if you already had plans to build that, why build the T1? Yeah, and if they had the research, how come that isn't important, like of paramount importance to find out where it came from? Like, they don't know it's a time traveling robot. They just know that some tech they don't understand exists in their world. Yeah, and, but if Cyberdyne gets destroyed. So, yeah. so they blow up all the stuff and then the. So would they assume that Cyberdyne built the tech, got destroyed, and then they. But then who destroyed Cyberdyne? Surely they would want to know why. So yeah, it turns out that the person <laughs> who destroyed Cyberdyne just so happens to look exactly like the guy they bring in as the face of the Terminator. <laughs> That's a good point as well because like yeah. you'd have the footage of like the from the police cars and stuff of cyberdyne being destroyed yeah because that's and the what man they do. doing it with the like the he's got the minigun in that minigun scene, and the yeah. grenade launcher fucking hell well, like... there's a security guard in that film who sees arnold schwarzenegger and then arnold schwarzenegger shoots him in both his kneecaps and says he'll live that security guard is going to remember what the guy who shot both his kneecaps off looked like i i refuse to believe that nobody in that office asked the question of where did this research come from? Oh, it comes from Cyberdyne. Okay, but why does Cyberdyne have, like, you know, technology in the 80s that is three decades beyond what we have now? Would well, you remember the story a few years ago about the guy who crashed into the police station and shot 30 police officers? Yeah, yeah, I do. Didn't he come back and shoot them all? Yeah, he did. That guy never got caught, did he? No, 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 no. Like, Sarah Connor said he was the robot. Oh, right. Wait a minute. What did that guy look like again? Oh, we'll put it on YouTube. Duh. Oh, wow. Um, who are we getting in for the face of this thing? Oh, a guy called William Candy. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> or as well, like, I know it's, uh, oh, I think Miles, oh, I forget the name of the guy. It's Miles like, Dyson. Miles yeah. Dyson gets killed, yeah. but his family do see the Terminator. His family, as far as I'm aware, are alive. Miles Dyson kills him, but surely his daughter and his wife, they saw the Terminator. They must have told somebody. Like, the government must have interviewed them. Like, about, do you know why your husband, like, you know, blew up his place of work? Uh, no. Would well, you know anything about, like, you know, his, his supposed, like, you know, accomplice? A giant Austrian man with a minigun. Did you see anyone look like that? No. I didn't see that. Do you also know why your husband was working on future technology involving theoretical robots? I don't know nothing about no robots. The, the only way that uh, research systems could possibly have the design of that Terminator's body there is if they already did have a copy of the plans. Because oh, otherwise, they... you wouldn't have gone that far ahead. You wouldn't have just suddenly gone from shitty wheels to man robots. Yeah, you don't go from gun on tank treads to robot skeleton with a laser. That just doesn't happen. And someone out there might be thinking, well, sure, that's just the natural evolution of the robot. Like, you know, 
a walking skeleton. It's like, well, no, because if you've got efficiency in mind, the most efficient thing would arguably be the find a herter, which is just a drone with a gun. Right? If, your per if the sole purpose of this thing is to shoot people, it doesn't need to have legs. It just needs to have many, many guns. Like, realistically, like, the Terminator, if the military is designing it purely for killing people, should look like a Droid Decker from Star Wars. It should just be a ball that rolls around the battlefield and has guns pointing out of every direction.